unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live cold in his hand, which And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. Thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Verse number three says, And one cried, unto another said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. From your theme, fix your eyes on Jesus. And from verse number three, I want to preach just for a little while. Holiness. We had it. We lost it. And we need to get it back. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yes. holiness. holiness, we had it, we lost it. Oh, y'all ain't talking, y'all ain't talking. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, we had it, we lost it. Lord knows we need to get it back. 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 You may have your seats. I'm going to preach whether you get quiet or not. I ain't nervous, neither am I scared. So you can shut down and clamp down all you want to, but I'm going to rock steady. When we look at Isaiah, his name means Jehovah is salvation. We talked about him, and I gave you his portfolio last night, but Isaiah was the son of Amos, and he was a prophet who prophesied during the reigns of four kings of Judah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. And around the death of Uzziah, one of Judah's more successful kings, Isaiah had a vision of God. And we, we talked on last night why God gave Isaiah a vision during the year, the death year, that Uzziah died. Because God wanted to show him that he was the true and living king. God wanted to prove to him that he was the king of the universe. And in this vision, Isaiah saw the Lord of hosts. He saw the God of the armies of heaven sitting on a throne. And we talked last night that this word sitting is yashab. And it, it means to sit as judge in ambushment. Not only does it mean as judge, but it also means to remain, to dwell, to endure. So God wanted Isaiah to understand that although his natural king was dead now, he had an eternal king that was seated on the throne in heaven. The Bible goes on to let us to know that he also saw Sarah. Flaming ones. And seraphs are six winged celestial beings that are said to be in the highest rank in the Christian angelic hierarchy. They are said to be the fifth rank out of ten in the Jewish angelic hierarchy. And the word seraph means burning or flaming ones. 
So they are known as the ones that have a fiery passion for doing God's good work, and they are continuously in his presence. And look at God. God don't want nobody to come in his presence all slack and slowful. Come on, somebody, giving him your leftover praise. So he already prepared himself somebody that's got some passion. Whatever you do for God, you ought to do it with passion told you if you're going to give him something, give him something he can feel. Let God know your love is real. We should never come to God all apathetic. Don't no woman want no man to just half rub on her. Come on, talk to me up in here. Told my husband, don't nobody want that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Even God don't have time for your cold praise. God wants some hot, fiery praise. Not only your praise ought to be hot, but your prayer ought to be lit up. Because he said the effectual, fervent prayer, the hot prayer. This is what moves the hand of God. So we got to come out of our complacency. When we come in church, get off your hump, they don't they? Get up and give God some glory. Get up and give him some praise. Get over your tiredness, your weariness, whatever you're going through. If you're praising, you'll feel better. Slap your neighbor a high five and say, if you're praising, you'll feel better. If you're praising, you'll sit your situation will look better because you're looking through the eyes of praise. You got to understand, baby, there's power in your praise. The praise runs Russia over the enemy. He can't stay in the midst of praise. So every chance you get, you ought to give the devil a nervous breakdown. You ought to give him a serious migraine headache. When you clap your hands, clap them with purpose. Because you know you about to turn hell upside down. So that's why I determined, and I make it up in my mind, every time I'm blessing, I'm going to knock the devil on the top of his head. Y'all know Bernie Mac, right? I know he's dead and gone. But Bernie Mac say, bust him in the head to the white meat show. You ought to determine I'm going to bust the devil in the head with this praise. This little old stuff we giving God ain't making the demons mad. But if you get up and give him praise, like you about to lose your mind, the devil got to move, y'all. He can't stay. He won't stay. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do. Give him something he can feel. Oh, come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Clap your hands and shout yes. Put some passion behind what you do. It's one thing to do it like that and you doing it for me. But the God of the universe, come on, people. We got to get our mind together. You got to understand who you praising. You ain't praising the pastor. Come on, you ain't praising the person sitting next to you. You praising the lover of your soul. You praising your redeemer, your healer, your keeper, your way maker, your mind regulator. That's it right there. Some of us, we would lose our mind if we come in church, make up our mind, and give God some praise. I don't care if the person sitting next to you telling you it don't take all that. You ought to be like blind Bartimaeus. They wanted Bartimaeus to shut up. But Bartimaeus said, I need something from God. So I'm going to holler till I get him. Holler till you get him. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, stop by Jesus, Jesus, I need you, Jesus, Jesus, tell somebody, holler, 
Holler till you get him. Holler till you get him. Stand up. Holler till you get his attention. God ain't nervous. He ain't deaf either. But holler till you get him. I don't know how we come in church and we say we want the Holy Ghost and we rolling your eyes and acting like it ain't necessary. Come on, somebody. You got to give God something to work with. We are emotional beings. Let somebody cut you off on 280. You ain't sitting there all deep and wonderful. I'm sure fingers are flying that should not be up. I ain't got no help up in here. And the finger you sticking up, you ain't telling them, huh, because you love Jesus. You telling them where to go, where to go, where to go, where to go. Then you come in the house of God and sitting like you all bougie. Tell, tell your neighbor, ain't nobody studying you. We need something from God. So in this vision, watch this now. I'm, I'm going to show you something. In this vision, the seraphims were worshiping God with a hymn that praise. Watch this. Not his love. They were worshiping God with a hymn that praised not his goodness. They were worshiping. There's something in this, saints. They were worshiping God that praised his holiness, his majesty, and his glory. And when I got to that verse, I said, look at here, look at here. You mean to tell me the angels take time to cry 24-7, holy, holy, holy. Now, it's critical that you understand that in Judaism, the repeating of a thing was not done for redundancy. But the squaring or the doubling of a name or a phrase indicated that a strong emphasis were being placed on a thing. Do you remember when Martha came to Jesus and she wanted Jesus to rebuke Mary and tell Mary to get up from sitting at his feet and come help her serve? And Jesus said, Martha, Martha. Thou art cumbereth about much serving. Do you remember when Jesus said to Simon, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you to do what? Sip you like wheat. When Jesus wanted to grab the attention of the audience, he said, truly, truly. But it was rare that it was taken, thank you, to the third degree, this triple invocation of holy, holy, holy has come to be known as the Tracyon. The angels celebrated, listen, listen, the angels celebrated the purity and the holiness of God. There was a time when the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the saints of the Most High, we used to celebrate the holiness of God. We used to celebrate that God was holy. We used to hold it. We used to possess it. We used to be proud of it. I know I ain't going to get no help right here, but there was a time when we celebrated with the angels the holiness of God. We celebrated. We wasn't mad about it. We wasn't mean mugging about it. Come on, somebody. But we celebrated the holiness, the standard separated those that had chosen to follow Christ from the rest of the world. In other words, there was a major difference, hear me good, people of God, between the saved and the unsaved. 
there was a major difference between the saints and the angels. I ain't going to get no help right there. There was a difference in our walk. Oh, I know I'm about to get on somebody's nerve, but I come to uproot that demon tonight. There was a difference in the way we talk. There was a difference in the way we carried ourselves. A difference in the way we dress. I ain't going to get no help. I'm going to preach anyhow. Not the saints of God looking at the world. And the world has become attractive. And we loathe the holiness of God. Now you got the sisters trying to look like Beyonce. Alicia Keys. I ain't going to get no help. Mary J. Blythe. The brothers want to act like P. Diddy. Snoop Dogg, Kanye West. Y'all don't act new on me tonight. You know who I'm talking about. Because you got some of their CDs. Good God in the morning. We don't like the old hymns. We don't want to sing the Lord's song. We act like we're in a strange land. Clap your hands and shout yes, Lord. Shout yes, Lord. Yeah, Lord, yeah. Help me, help me, help me. Help me. Shama. Hey, God, oh, God. Some of them sitting there looking at me. Y'all know my saying. Stuck like Chuck. Still like Cliff. Da, 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 Dora. The Explorer. Like I got a third eye. You know holiness. In other words, there was a difference. Not just in our appearance, because it's, so, tell your neighbor, it's so much deeper than that. But it's part of it. Or oh, you can't leave it out. It's part, a fish look like a fish. A dog look like a dog. So a saint ought to look like a saint. It's part of it. I know you don't like it, but it's right in it. Huh? God didn't ask you for your opinion. We didn't get the vote on it. So that shows me my opinion means absolutely nothing. Well, I think. Ain't nobody care what you think. Well, I believe. Ain't nobody care what you believe unless it's lining up with the word. People, the old folk used to say the word of God is right all by itself. There's a difference. There was a difference. There was a difference. We got to understand holiness. Hear me good now. Holiness is not a denomination. It is a lifestyle. It is something we live 24. Oh, my we live it 24-7. We don't live it on Monday, then on Tuesday. We act like we don't know. Then on Wednesday, we pick it back up. Come on, somebody. Uh-oh, we got some hypocrites that just get holy on service night. Oh, God. This is a 24-7 job. 2 Corinthians 6, 7 through 8 said, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye what? Mixed in. Look like them. Act like them. Talk like them. Walk like them. Separate. What part of separate don't you understand? Be ye separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. He said, I will receive you and do what? Be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. I got happy this morning when the scripture was quoted, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Come on, somebody, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Wear apple bottoms. I lost somebody right there. Present your body as a what? Now watch this now. You know in the Old Testament, sacrifices were killed. 
God wants us to be a what? A living, alive, but yet dead. He wants a living, he wants an alive person, but he wants you to be dead to you. Alive to God, but dead to Terry. Alive to God, you put your name in it, but dead to Sue, dead to Sam. Alive to God, but dead to the world. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? And be not, con- don't be squeezed into the world's way of thinking. But you got to be transformed by the, this is the problem in the church. Not just this church, but the church world. If your mind ain't transformed, I know you're not going to understand it. I know you're not going to agree with it. I know you're going to think it's hard. But the way of a transgressor is hard. Not the ways of God. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you might prove that which is that good and acceptable and perfect will. Anything else is not good. Anything else is not acceptable. This ain't the bishop's doctrine. This is what God has ordained before the foundation of Tell your neighbor we had it. We lost it. And we need to get it back. There used to be a reverence, not only for God, but for for his word. And I know if you don't reverence God, you ain't going to reverence the men and the women of God. There used to be a reverence. Don't you know, folk wouldn't talk back to the pastor. They wouldn't wait. My God, we thought Jesus was coming to get us. Now, because judgment is not rendered speedily, it's set in the heart of man to do evil. So we think we're grown now. We're 36. We're 24. Come on, talk back to me. We're 21, and I'm grown. Nobody tell me what to do. Nobody tell me what to wear. Nobody tell me where to go. We got to understand we are not our own. There, There is a spirit now that has crept into the church. There's a spirit now that the saints have embraced as pertaining to holiness. And it is that God has changed. Y'all heard that up here. God has changed and God don't no longer require that for his people to live holy. But the word of God said Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God don't change, you change. And we now ascribe the standard of God. This is God's standard. We now ascribe it to legalism. We call it bondage and we call it oppression. The preacher putting you in bondage over there at that church. The preacher is oppressing you. <laughs> but you got to understand, we say we free and we live now in the dispensation of grace. But in order to understand the totality of freedom, you got to move away from your cheap understanding, your cheap definition of grace. Because <laughs> grace does not free you from the standard of God. Grace frees you from sin. <laughs> Romans 6 and 1, what shall we say then? <laughs> shall we continue in sin <laughs> that grace may abound? <laughs> he doesn't even wait for you to answer. <laughs> he gives you the answer. <laughs> God forbid. So it's critical that you understand. Realize that grace does not free you from the standard of God. Grace frees you from. It's critical that you understand that one of the most basic fundamental understandings about God have become strange and unfamiliar to many of us. Despite biblical admonitions for holiness, it has become such a foreign concept in our churches because now we want to look like everybody else. What do you call it when God's people want to be like the world? 
Give us a king like the other nations. Let us dress like the other nations. Set me free, Pharaoh. Come on, talk back to me. We got to understand what the word holiness really means. In the Hebrew, it is the word Kodesh. And it means a sacred place, a sacred thing, or a sacred person. It means sanctity, consecrated. It means dedicated. It is a hollow thing. And it derived from the Hebrew word Kodesh, which means separated or set apart. Leviticus 20 and 26 said, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy and have severed you from other people that you shall be mine. God picked us up out of the world to be his people. And when Israel was journeying, he told them when you're going to the land, don't look like the other folk. Don't dress like them. Don't serve their God. Don't even eat like them. Oh, come on somebody. But now we're mixing and we're mingling. We don't understand that they're going to take you away from the true and the living God. Oh, ain't going to do it all at one time. But little by little. Oh, come on. Come on here. Little by little. The devil works on you. Let me get back to this. Holiness in the Greek is the word Hegios, and it means sacred, it means blameless, it means consecrated. It also means equitable in character or act. In other words, holiness is the conformality to the moral character of God. To be holy means to be set apart for special use. And a lot of us want God to use us, but we don't want to be set apart. We want an anointing to swing from the chandeliers, but we don't want to be set apart. We want God to bless our mess. Well, I stopped by tonight to tell you God ain't going to sanction and he's not going to bless your mess. He puts his seal of approval upon a person that has been decided to live holy. When we look at this, you got to understand that the obvious starting place with holiness is God, because God is holy. He tells us, watch this, he blessed me when he told me this. He tells us, to be holy, but he says about himself, I am holy. So we become, but he is. Go, oh, come on, somebody. We become, but God is holy. Leviticus 11 44 he said, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. God is holy, he's distinct, he's separate from any other created being or false gods. Holiness is not only one of God's primary attributes, but it is his total glory crown. That's what it is. And you got to understand at no time will God act unholy. At no time will God be unseemly, unlike us. And our character is supposed to be holy. But many a times we act unholy. We look unholy. Or we worship unholy. There's an unholy worship that sometimes goes on in the churches. You got to understand that God wants wants our total worship. He don't want your heart to be someplace else and your hands just up in the air. He said men praise me with their lips but their heart is far from me. You got to understand that God requires us to be holy. He said in Psalm 93, oh God, by me. He said holiness become at thine house, oh Lord, for how long? Forever. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, holiness is still in style. Holiness 
ain't out of style. Holiness is still up to date. And if you believe it, tell somebody you wear it well. Oh, you got to understand, when you decide to be holy, Mary Kay can't make you look like God can make it look. I know I ain't going to get no help right now, but he say he'll beautify the meat with salvation. Good God in the morning. Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Max Factor can't give you the go, baby. Just can't do it. Mascara won't make you look better than how God can do it. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. You got to understand that God knows what he's doing. He said holiness becoming thine house. This word becoming means to befit. It means to make suitable. So what God has done, he has chose holiness as his decor. He's chose holiness as his decoration. He wants the house to be decorated from the front door to the back door with holiness. He decorate the witness with holiness because it becometh thine house. Not only the house, but everybody in the house is called to be holy. And you got to understand, we had it, we lost it, and we need to get it back. And when holiness, I mean true holiness, not this fake stuff, when true holiness come back to the house of God, we'll experience the glory. I said the glory, the glory. The glory will fall. The glory will come down and arrest his people. We'll experience the Shekinah glory, the heaviness, the weightiness, the kabod of God. God himself will step in the room and nobody can move. Nobody can worship. We'll be on our knees just serving and worshiping. We'll be on our knees giving them glory. Because when the holiness of God comes in, he brings power. He brings deliverance. He brings healing. When the holiness come back to the house, nobody will have to beg you to come up to the altar. Ain't nobody got to say, clap your hands and call on Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ain't nobody got to beg you and rub on your back and touch your stomach and catch your neck. But you'll come right out. What must, what must I do to be saved? You'll come running. You won't sit and sleep while the word is being preached. Your heart will be prick because you see your unwretchedness. We'll see our stubbornness. We'll see our step ways. Our stuck up ways, our prideful ways, our arrogance, how arrogant is it to come in the house of God and to smug at God like he ain't nobody. But when holiness come back, everybody will be filled with the Holy Ghost, spirit and tongues, and the Spirit of God give utterance. You won't sit there. You'll be shaken. You'll be nervous. You wanna please him. What can I do? What can I do? Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Shout yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. When the holiness come back in the church, the drunk won't need 12 steps. Come in junk. But God will sober them up. The crack addict won't go to detox. When the Holy Ghost come back like God wanted to come back, whoever stepped through the threshold will be delivered. You won't need a patch. 
for your nicotine habit. I ain't got no help up in here. You won't need a pill for depression. Darzine, you won't need it. Doing the Darzine shuffle, you won't need it. You won't need nothing natural, but you'll be addicted to the power of God. You'll be like a drug addict. Gotta have it, gotta have it. Gotta have my fix. I want the presence. When holiness, I say when true holiness, when true holiness come back to the house of God, we'll have a conviction when we sin. Slaves now sin, wipe their mouth, get right up on the choir and sing. I know I ain't gonna get no help. We sin. We get right on the music and play. I love musicians. My heart, all my boys are musicians. But sometimes they the worst ones. Because the devil is after that anointing. Hear me and hear me good. The devil don't care that you can play. He was the anointed cherub. He could play every instrument all at one time. One time. You think you got it going on. You got to move from instrument to instrument. But the devil, he was the chief musician in heaven. He played the music to usher in the presence of God. But that spirit of pride, 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 that arrogance, that arrogance, that arrogance, got a hold of him. God said, thou were perfect in the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. We'll sit and come right in the church and usher. Dirty hands, dirty mouths, sexing and texting. Come on. Bumping and rubbing. I ain't got no help up in here. Come on, talk back to me. Oh, it's still in the church. Y'all can sit there and act cute and deep and wonderful if you want to. But like I tell them in Hopkins, you're going to get something that the devil can't get off. And I ain't, when I say clap, I ain't talking about clap your hands all you sense. You're going to get something called clap. You're going to get something called STD. A little chlamydia, chlamydia, chlamydia. Oh, you know it? Oops. When it come back, when real holiness come back, the young women will keep their dresses down. And the men will keep their pants pulled up. And when real holiness, you won't be struggling. Oh, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle. And I tell them, tell them in Hopkins, as soon as you ask them, is the young man saved, they start fumbling and mumbling. If you fumbling, I already know the answer to that question. And you ain't never one time see God date the devil. Never one time did God go out on a date with the devil. But the people of God are attracted to unsaved men. Attracted to unsaved women. They look good to you. Because that strange flesh. And that's your flesh lusting after strange flesh. But when holiness come back in the house, you will see that booger for what he really is. Nobody can tell him nothing. They going to date him anyway. They're going to talk to him on the down low. And then when he gets you, you're going to see he read. You thought he was Denzel, but he looked just like Freddy Krueger. You're going to have Nightmare on Elm Street, baby. Jason is back. Keep on messing with the devil. Keep on flirting with the devil. 
Why do you want to take yourself through that terror? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why you want somebody that's going to manipulate you and play with your emotions? And you sometimes up, you sometimes down, almost level to the ground. That's not God. God don't play with your emotions like that. God don't manipulate you. He's a gentleman. And he'll never ask you to sin. So if you got the mind of Christ, what in the world makes somebody that ain't even got a mind that mocks your God, what makes you want to hook up with them and you think that's going to be blessed? I come to talk to the young women. What make you think that's going to be blessed? This is an example that I give every place I go to preach. You like a person that walks up to a machine and it says out of order. They got the corn slot taped up. You're going to take the tape off the corn slot, put your money in. Now you're ranting and raving that it won't give you nothing. Ask your neighbor, are you serious? The machine said out of order, out of order, out of order. Now you having a hissy over something that already warned you. Well, that's how we are with God. Now we want the blessings of God, but we operating out of slap your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor. Don't operate out of order. Look at that one that wouldn't look at you. Say, hey, boo, hey, boo, hey, boo, hey, boo. You out of order. Get back in order. Get back in line. Get back in holiness. Get back in righteousness. Get back, get back, get back. We had it. We lost it. And we need. We need, we need, we need to get it back. We need to get it back. Come on, people of God. We got to do better. I mean, I quoted the first night I was here doing your scripture praise. Jeremiah 29 and 11. This is God talking to his people while they were still in captivity. But look at the heart of God. He says, I know the thoughts. I think toward you. Thoughts of peace. God ain't thinking crazy stuff about you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To do what? Give you an a. God wants every one of us to have an expected end. Every, I don't care what you're going through now. She told us this morning it's the process. And see, we don't like processing. We living in a thank you, a quick, fast society. Now you want God to microwave your blessing. No, you're going to be processed, baby. Come on. You're going to be processed after you have suffered a while. He'll come in. He ain't going to leave you there. He ain't going to leave you there. Tell your neighbor, he ain't going to leave you there. He'll come in and strengthen you, settle you, and establish you. He wants us to be prepared for the blessing. When it comes back, the church will be back in order. Ain't nobody got to beg you to come to church. Ain't nobody got to beg you to come to church. You'll have a love for it. You will desire it, like Job said, more than your necessary food. It won't be good. I don't know how in the world you got the Holy Ghost and it's greed to come and serve God. How, how is it hard? Jesus never found it grievous to do his Father's will. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because you about to get in a full-blown accident. You grieved to come to church? You mad about coming to church? The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, not mad. 
You bored? Folks sit in church and be texting and tweeting and on Facebook and all kind of foolishness. See, that's the irreverence we have now. You wouldn't dare go to the courthouse chewing gum, sleeping while court is going on. I ain't got no help up in here. Because the judge would say, out of order. And he would find you. Some of y'all don't know God already done gave you the pink slip. We have no reverence whatsoever. We do it. We talk about preachers be preaching hard as they can. They be sitting there punching each other and talking about the preacher. I'm going to tell you, when, when real holiness come back, there's going to be some Ananias and Sapphiras. When real holiness come back, you'll stop stealing ties, telling lies, fanning flies, cause selling pies. You know you got some stealing saints, right? And this is why I tell them in Hopkins, if you steal from God, I'm going to hide my per- Can I check your person? No, leave it right there. Because if they steal from God, they'll steal from anybody. Come on, talk to me up in here. Uh-oh. Y'all know I told you when I feel it. I know how to rock steady. I hope we ain't got no stealers, no robbers in the house. Because I'm about to rock it. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. And it ain't gas. I felt that. Somebody let all the air out the room. Oh, talk about ties. That ain't your money. You curse with a curse. Can't nobody do nothing to help you until you reverse the curse. Tell your neighbor reverse the curse. You better give God what's due to him. I don't care if you believe it. It's a law. And it works whether you believe it or not. The devourer will always come and eat up your stuff. You will always struggle, struggle, struggle. Because you're touching the accursed thing. Stand all over the building. We had it. We lost it. And see, you know what? This, this is a message that I shouldn't even have to tell y'all to stand. That, that should have been something that already got your attention. I'm, I'm being so serious. I'm not mad, y'all. I'm serious. I'm mad at the devil. God wants us to be blessed. And if we would just surrender to God, that's it. Totally fix our eyes. I told you last night. It's the answer for every problem. If you lonely, fix your eyes. On your comforter. Come on. If you bored, fix your eyes on Jesus. There's nothing boring about Jesus. This is a sweet way. I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world. Because I know what it's like. I wasn't born in the church. And see, this is half the problem, y'all. Take it for granted. Bishop and I was going back, and I said a saying to him. He said he never heard it in Jamaica. But you won't miss your water till your well runs dry. When you get out there in that world and start tasting that stuff that the devil offers you that makes it look so enticing, make you think you, oh, we can't do nothing. We always in church. We can't listen to nothing. We can't weigh nothing. We can't go to nothing. Baby, you can do anything you want to do. Just don't sin. You sound like Adam and Eve. When God said to them, all these trees. Watch this. Y'all don't go too fast. Slow it down for the spiritual.